Each rodent pest species has different behavioral characteristics, breeding dynamics, and habitat preferences. Some species breed regularly, some breed throughout the year, and others breed at very specific times. The rice field rat, for example, breeds only when the rice is in the reproductive phase. If there is one planting season per year, they have one breeding season. If there are two, they will have two. And if they have three crops a year, they will have three breeding seasons. Female rats are pregnant for 21 days and can mate the day after they give birth. One female can give birth to 3 liters with 12 young per liter during a rice crop resulting in a total of 36 rats. These young will not breed until the next crop unless neighboring farmers plant their crops more than two weeks apart. This will extend the breeding season allowing the rats from the first litter to also breed. Therefore, one adult female could potentially give birth to 120 rats in a single rice growing season. Scientists have also been studying where rats live at different times of the year in agricultural landscapes. This then enables them to target rat populations when they have aggregated in easily accessible habitats. Once the ecology of a major pest species is understood, scientists and extension specialists can work closely with farmers to develop ecologically sound, cost-effective management strategies that fit with usual farming practices, including traditional rat-catching methods. Studies in Indonesian and Vietnamese villages have clearly shown that rat populations can be successfully managed if farmers work together as a community, applying their control at the right time and in the right habitats. Such ecologically based actions have also led to a 50% reduction in the use of chemical rodenticides. Effective community actions include keeping irrigation banks less than 30 centimeters wide to make it difficult for rats to build nests. Conducting community campaigns using local methods to control rats within 30 days of planting the crop, which is before the main breeding season for rats in rice fields. These community actions should focus on village gardens, main irrigation channels, and roadsides where the rats gather in small corridors when the land is being plowed in preparation for planting. If control is left later, then rats would have already dispersed throughout the rice crops, making it much more time-consuming and costly to control them over a vast area. Cleaning up any grain spills at harvest and synchronizing planting so that crops are planted within two weeks of each other. Rats are highly mobile. They can travel a distance of one kilometer a night. If farmers do not act together and only one farmer is effective in controlling rats, then rats will invade his crop from the fields where no control was done. One simple technology added to the armory of rice farmers is a trap and fence system known as the Trap Barrier System or TBS. Used across much of Southeast Asia, the TBS comprises a plastic fence surrounding a small rice crop planted two to three weeks earlier than the surrounding crop with traps set into the plastic. Rats have a very well-developed sense of smell. At night, rats will be attracted to the smell of the early developing rice within the fence. This rice acts as bait. The rats reach the fence and then follow the line of the plastic until they reach a hole, which they enter to reach the rice. They are caught in the trap and removed the next morning. One TBS can protect up to 10 hectares. For smallholder farmers who have less than 2 hectares of rice, the TBS requires community action to share in the cost and daily checking of traps. Therefore, scientists refer to this method as community trap barrier system. This method is very cost-effective for managing rat populations when there are losses of more than 10% in a specific season each year. 
However, in the lowlands of Myanmar, scientists found that the bandicoot rat, which is the main pest species, is not attracted to the traps in a TBS. Their behavior needs to be better understood and the weaknesses in their biology need to be identified. Similarly, in the upland rice environments, there is still much to learn about the breeding ecology, habitat use, and patterns of seasonal movements. So one important finding from our research is that it's the breeding of the rodents which are driving the population dynamics in these outbreaks. It is not the normal mortality such as predators that are really driving those populations. So we need to focus then on factors which are going to minimise the breeding of rodents and this includes synchrony of cropping. And there's also research which is looking at some innovative methods of fertility control. That research results so far is promising, but we still have some more research to do. A deeper knowledge of the ecology of rats will help scientists develop effective ecologically based control of their populations. Armed with this knowledge, scientists can work closely with farmers to advise them when and where to control rats using their traditional catching methods. Farmers would no longer have to rely on expensive and dangerous chemicals that kill other mammals, birds and predators that eat rats. Such chemicals are a last resort. The key to success in this battle against rats is coordinated community action every year. We need to be constantly vigilant because if we let our guard down, then the rats will quickly breed into alarming numbers, and public enemy number one will remain a menace to society.